are we doing, everyone? There's no football going on, right? It's a bit boring. It's like an international break that we didn't need. But it is what it is. It gives us the opportunity, though, to do this video. I'm going to do an updated version of Keep or Sell. I think I've done one every year or every transfer window. And I'm going to do this one ahead of January. I was going to do it a little bit later in December, but sorry, we'll do it this weekend. What I'm going to do is run through the full Manchester United squad, goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, and attackers, every single player. And I'm going to say we need to either keep them, sell them, or loan them out. Hell, we'll have three categories. Keep, sell, or loan. Why not? Because there's so many talking points ahead of this January transfer window. It might be Ralph Ragnick's only one as Manchester United manager. So I want to run through every single player and give my opinion on whether I think we should keep them, sell them, or loan them out, maybe. And I want you, as always, to let me know what you think in the comments below. Please, if you would, consider dropping, dropping a like Sorry, on the video. It does help the channel. Love to have your support. Let's get into this one. Let's start having a conversation. And let's start with David De Gea. And let's not waste any time here, all right? Let's just get straight into it. Why are we going to say anything else apart from David De Gea is getting kept? Of course he's getting kept. That's the worst tick I've ever seen. Let me see if my ticks get better as the video goes on. David De Gea has been fantastic this season. It's almost like when Manchester United are playing bad, that's when David De Gea is playing good, right? Because that's when you see his shot stopping, his sort of real abilities come to the fore. What we want to see more of, I suppose, a bit like uh, Dean Henderson's performance against Young Boys. You know, that sort of commanding sweeper, keeper sweeper sort of role. I've seen De Gea do that once or twice a season as well. So he is capable. But I think David De Gea, I mean, it's not even a debate. De Gea is definitely getting kept. Now, let's move on to Lee Grant. And I still, for the life of me, don't know what Lee Grant does. And for the life of me, I have no idea why he's at this football club. And I don't mean that in a horrible, massively disrespectful way. But Lee Grant needs to be sold, man. Lee Grant was brought in. We, we brought in Tom Heaton in the summer. We, we, we brought in another backup goalkeeper. It's weird. And I, I, look, First thing I will say before we do get into this list properly, I know all these transfers aren't going to happen during the January transfer window. I know it's not going to be like five, six, seven players being sold and six, seven players being loaned out. It's impossible. But I'm just saying my opinion on every single spot inside this squad and what I would do if I was manager, or at least what I'd want to do. And Lee Grant, for sure, I don't, I don't understand why he's, why he's still at Manchester United. It makes no sense. It really doesn't. Because look, we brought Tom Heaton in during the summer. Tom Heaton coming back to Manchester United, coming back as a backup goalkeeper. And that's exactly what Tom Heaton is and does. Oh, look at that. It's a much better tick. Happy with that one. So Tom Heaton, I'm absolutely keeping him as well. And it, the, the only real question that we've got in our goalkeeping area, in my opinion, for January anyway, is what to do with Dean Henderson. Now, where do you stand on this? Dean Henderson, obviously being linked with Ajax, although Van der Sar sort of played those Ajax rumours down, said that there's not really much going on, but with Onana probably going to Inter Milan and agreeing a pre-contract agreement, and Stecklenburg being injured at the moment, they're down to their third-choice goalkeeper. So I think in, a, in an ideal world, I'd love to loan out Dean Henderson. I'm going to go green. Loan's going to get a green. Why not? Because you're still staying at Manchester United. I think a loan spell would do Dean Henderson good. I think it's abundantly obvious he's not going to get in this Manchester United team this season, not with David De Gea playing the way he is. So in my opinion, Dean going out on loan in January would be a good thing. That, that's what I would like to see happen anyway. So that's the goalkeepers done there. I think De Gea obviously keeping him, but Lee Grant should be sold, man. Absolutely should be sold. Tom Heaton, he can stay as well as a third choice. And Dean going out on loan. Maybe if Dean does go out on loan, then Lee Grant, there's obviously no chance of him leaving anyway because you need three goalkeepers. But look, that's what I would do in the long term for Manchester United. Let's go down to the fence here. And there's some, there's some really easy ones to discuss here, right, isn't there? Because Victor Lindelof, we know absolutely he's going absolutely nowhere. And neither is Eric Bai. And neither is Harry Maguire. So let's waste no time, eh, speaking about those three. Whether or not, gee, that's the worst tick of the lot. Look at that. Um, I don't think Harry Maguire is as bad as a defender as people make him out to be. I think Victor Lindelof is probably a better defender than most people make him out to be. I hope he's fit and well. Um, I know he was, his family was going through some, uh, some tough times. I believe their child uh, was in hostel. So I wish them all the very best. And I hope they all come out of there completely healthy. Um, Eric Bai is Eric Bai. And we know what Eric Bai is. And we know what Eric Bai does. Uh, and he's a, he's a bit of a hothead. But he's, when he's good, he's great, isn't he? When he's good, he's great. And the only conversation we've really got to have here is about Phil Jones. And I don't have to... I mean, I don't have to explain the fact that I'm drawing a red cross on him because uh, he basically is a charity case now, isn't he? It's, it's Phil Jones, man. Phil Jones. What is a Phil Jones? I don't really know. He's kept his fitness this year at the very least. And I said the best thing, the best scenario for Manchester United this year with Phil Jones 
would be if he had an injury-free season and we could therefore sell him and somebody would come in because nobody was going to, in their right mind, buy Phil Jones during the summer, were they? Because he simply hadn't played any football and you couldn't guarantee that he was going to be fit or not. So for me, Phil Jones, absolutely, if in an ideal dream world situation, we would be able to sell him in the January transfer window. I don't think that's going to happen. Someone we're obviously not going to be selling, and that is Raphael Varane. And you're damn straight, I'm going to keep him. We, we're still yet to really see the best of Varane in the United shirt. Injuries have hampered the start to his United career. I hope it's not an indication of what's to come, and it's just it's just going through a bit of a rough patch because we need him back after this, in, after this whatever this is, uh, with the Omicron coronavirus, and we don't know how long it's going to last, but we need Varane back in that defence ASAP Rocky. Now, Diogo Delot, prior to the last few weeks, this might have gone down as a bit of a loan option, but I don't think there's any chance... Diogo goes anywhere. I think he's really proved himself to be a very, very good right back in the last few last few weeks. I think I think I, I've mentioned this as a comparison, right? People have always said uh, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, probably one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders in European football. Nobody would really argue that. Tackling spot on, very hard to get past. Going forward, massively, massively weak, and he needs to work on that game. It's a bit of a reverse for Diogo Delot. Not that I'm saying he's one of the best uh, fullbacks in Europe, but naturally he was good going forward. But he needed to work on that defensive side of his game. And I think he massively has in the last few weeks. So all credit to him. And the same here goes for Alex Tellez, really, if you want to put that in the same situation. Alex Tellez has really impressed. And of course, Luke Shaw's going nowhere. So there's, there's not really a conversation to be had about any of these. But what you need uh, to succeed in football is two players in every single position. And Alex Tellez's form in the last few weeks and Diogo Delots has given United real options at fullback. And now Luke Shaw and wan have to fight their way back into the team. So all credit to them. They've done really, really well to do that. Now, Aaron wan of course, as I said, I mean, he's going absolutely nowhere, is he? Uh, Brandon Williams is already out on loan. So let's just keep that down as a loan. Uh, Axel Tuanzebe. Where is he? Is he on loan? I can't remember whether he's on loan or not. Let me, let me quickly check that. I should probably have checked that before we started filming this. Uh, I think he might be on loan. Is it back at Aston Villa? I think he is. Let's have a look. As, there, where, where is he at the moment? Axel Twenzebe. Current team. Yeah, he's on loan. Right, so I thought I was right. I mean, I kind of knew that, but I didn't. I just wanted to get confirmed before I did a big L on his face. There we go. So he's out on loan. Uh, and that's the right thing. Of course, it's the right thing. Um, he was really, really unlucky with injuries last year. I think if Twenzebe didn't get those injuries that kept him out of the first team, I think he would have established himself properly. Now, Ted and Menge, what, what do you think about him? Obviously, he came on against young boys at left back, not his natural position, did very, very well. Spent a bit out on loan already, I think, a derby this season. I'd like to see him loaned out as well. I think that would be a good thing for Ted Mengi. I don't think he's going to get that much game time at United this year. The odd appearance here or there. And he's at that age where he does need to improve. And the only way you're going to improve at that age is by playing regular first-team football. But there's not too many conversations to really be had about our defenders, is there? Phil Jones, he should be sold. If we can sell him, that would be incredible. I don't think we will. And then you've got a couple of loan spells, but they've already been done. Now, midfield, this is where we start to have real conversations. And, well, there's none bigger there than the very, very first one, and that's Paul Pogba. And I think I've kind of made my opinion very clear on this whole Pogba situation. I think if Manchester United can, Manchester United should be selling Paul Pogba in January. Now, you might disagree with that, and, of course, this will no doubt cause some debate in the comments, but I think it's abundantly obvious now that I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe it's not abundantly obvious, but for me, I'm done. I'm just done with the Pogba situation. I'm done with hoping that when he comes back, it all is a bit different. And then he has a bit of a wicky bit of form and then he form dips and then he goes on an international break and then his agent says something. Can we go in a circle and a circle and a circle and it repeats and it repeats and it repeats. I'm just done with that. I'm done with that sort of circus and the, the constant side story of Paul Pogba. Uh, I think that's just as much to do with his agent as it is to do with him. But for me personally, oh, yeah, I'm just finished with it. We're going to lose him on a free in the summer anyway. If we can somehow get 20 to 30 million in January, I think it will be a smart move by our football club to do that and then reinvest that hopefully in someone maybe like Amadou Haidara, who, Guido Schaefer, if you haven't seen that interview with Guido, love the guy, need to bring him on once a month at least. Uh, he said that he, he expects Amadou Haidara to be around about 20, 25 million euros. So you basically could sell Paul Pogba and maybe get Haidara for the same price. Now, one matter. I think in terms of January, I'm going to put him down as a keep. But if this was, uh, if this was me doing a, a video ahead of the summer, I think I've definitely got Wine Matter down as a sell there, for sure. Uh, but Wine Matter, he'll be here to the end of the season, and then we'll have that conversation then. 
Now, Jesse Lingard, I think this is an easy one, right, for everybody. I'm sure we're all in the same camp here now. Or maybe we're not because you want him as a squad player. Jesse Lingard should absolutely be sold by Manchester United. Jesse Lingard should have absolutely been sold by Manchester United during the summer. But we just messed up. I think we priced him out of a move to West Ham. But now Luke Newcastle to come in sniffing. I think we can get 20, between 20 and 30 million is a very fair price for Jesse Lingard. He's in his prime, 28, was he 20, just turned 29. Uh, he's now a more experienced player, can go in and become one of the leading members of that side. And I think it'll be a right thing to do. Andreas Pereira, I don't need to waste too much time here. He's already out on loan at Flamengo. And Manchester United just need to let him, he's already pushing and angling for that permanent deal and that permanent move. And I think he deserves it. Fair enough. He's, he's been doing quite well out there in Flamengo and I just don't think he's got any chance coming back at Manchester United. He had his opportunities and he didn't take them. Now, Ahmad Diallo, where do you stand on Ahmad? I think for me, it's quite obvious. And that is a loan spell for Ahmad. And that's going to final where he would have already been now if he didn't get an injury during the summer. A really bad injury timing wise, certainly for the lad. Robbed him of what would have been a very good loan spell final. PSV, Ajax all going toe-to-toe -to -toe for the Eredivisie title. He could have played a central role in that, and he still can in the second half of the season. I think he should definitely get that move, and I think he deserves it. And if we look in here, there's a couple of, well, a couple of key players for Manchester United going absolutely nowhere. Sorry, Fred, for that horrendous tick I've just given you. Bruno Fernandes and Fred both going absolutely nowhere. Let's not waste any time having a conversation about them. Now, Facundo Pellistri, he's already out on loan, so that's an easy one to do. Um, Remember how impressive he was during the preseason. I'm excited to see how he can sort of grow into a player at United. We have no idea. I suppose I can put him down as a bit of an An Angelo Henriquez type character. Remember when we signed, signed him? Was it from the Universidad de Chile? Imagine I remembered that. I might have done. Uh, we were all excited about him, but then that kind of flopped. Let's see what goes on with him. Now, let's move down here and there's some more questions to be had. One, one obvious one there is about Donny van der Beek, who we'll get on to next. Now, Nemanja Matic, again... I put this in the same category as Wan Mata. If this was me doing a keep or sell for the summer window, I might be drawing something very different here on, on Emmanuel Matic's picture. But I'm going to go for a tick. I'm going to be keeping Matic. I don't think we'll be selling him between now and the end of January. I think it'll be kind of foolish too. We don't have anybody else really like him in our squads. So we need to keep him and use him in the games where we need a player like him. Now, Donny van der Beek. Probably the one that's got the most question marks, I would say. Because Pogba, for me, is, seems quite straightforward. If United can get money for Paul Pogba, United should be selling Paul Pogba. But I think it might be a little bit different here with Donny van der Beek. I don't know. For my, my, gut, my gut is telling me this now. And I mean this from a human perspective. Oh, sorry, mate, you've got a dot on you. There you go. My gut is to say sell Donny van der Beek. If you're really not going to play him, man, you can't thwart and stop his career any longer any longer and i actually thought he was going to be one of the players that thrived under ralph radnick now this is on this this is a question mark i'm going to put a red one and a couple of really weird looking question marks i don't even know that's a real question mark what have i done there oh, that don't even go me too much people that's horrendous anyway i think i'm going to go for that uh i don't know whether donny will be will push for, if donny pushes for a move i think donny will get the move if manchester united i don't think united will push him out the door but yeah, it, it depends whether or not you think his career and, and the right thing for his career right now is to leave Manchester United. And I don't really think you can argue otherwise. Now, James Garner, we already know. He currently, I believe, he's out on loan at Nottingham Forest. So that's an easy one there. James Garner, somebody who so many United fans are calling, saying, look, give him a chance in midfield. Doing well out on loan at Norwich. Let's see what goes on. I don't know. I think we're going to be signing. I, I've, I've, I struggle to see James Garner breaking into the first team, if I'm being completely honest. I think if you're looking at options there, I'd say Hannibal's probably got a bigger chance of breaking in than James Garner does. Now, Scott McTominay, whether or not you like him or you lump him, he's a good squad player for Manchester United, and I won't really hear otherwise. I don't think he should be starting every week for Manchester United in the same way that Mario Fellaini should have been starting every week for Manchester United. But it does not mean that when you use those players correctly in the right manner, they are good squad players for United. And I absolutely think Scott McTominay falls into that category. So I've gone for Matic to be kept. Donny van der Beek, I really, really, really don't know, right? And they're supposed to be question marks, but yeah, they're questionable question marks, I'd say. But Scott McTominay there. Now, Hannibal, what's your take on Hannibal? He's in this weekend, I believe, the FIFA Qatar Cup, no, the FIFA Arab Cup final. Tunisia, I'm not sure who they're playing. He's absolutely storming it. I personally 
would like to see him stay at Manchester United and be give break into the first team between now and the end of the season. Especially if someone like Paul Pogba leaves and was to be sold, depending on whether or not this happens, then there might be an opportunity there for Hannibal to come through and break into the first team. He's, re he's won two Man of the Match awards out there for Tunisia so far in the tournament. He's got to the final. He's going to play in the final. The guy is a very, very exciting talent. And I'd like to see him get an opportunity. So yeah, I would keep Hannibal at the club rather than loaning him out. That's my own personal opinion, of course. And then we go down here to the forwards. And let's just waste no time here in saying Cristiano Ronaldo is staying. Lo and behold, I know it's going to surprise a few people that I want to keep Ronaldo until the end of the season. But I want to keep Ronaldo to the end of the season. Now, Anthony Martial, there's real question marks to be had about a few of these strikers, actually. And Anthony Martial is one of them. And for me, it's quite an easy answer. And that's this. Anthony Martial should be sold by Manchester United in the January transfer window. And I feel very, very strongly about this one. The fact that his agent came out. Yeah, Ralph Rangnick was like, I don't care what, what an agent does. If, 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 a foot, if a footballer or an agent wants to speak to me, my door's open. Come and speak to me. Instead, Anthony Martial's agent went to the press, said that his player wants to leave Manchester United, took Rangnick by surprise. So that's really going to have tainted the relationship between Martial and Rangnick. And I'll be honest, man, I'm, I, in the same way I'm kind of done with Paul Pogba, I'm done with Anthony Martial. It's been, it's been a long, long time. He hasn't established himself as our leading number nine. He hasn't established himself as our best winger. He just hasn't established himself. He had that season under Solskjaer, two seasons, the first season under Van Howe. And the first full season under Solskjaer, where he scored like 20, was it one goal behind Rashford he finished? I think they had 50 plus, nearly 50 goals between them. Martial last year disappeared off face of the earth. Uh, and I think he will disappear from Manchester United. I think it's the right thing to do. 20, 30 million, same sort of price as Lingard, if not a little bit more. We should be able to get 50 million between Martial and Lingard in January, if we're good at what we do. But we're not, we, don't, we don't normally get uh, the right prices for players, do we? But we absolutely should with Martial and Lingard. Marcus Rashford, let's not even have a question there. His form's been questionable this season. I was really, really surprised. Remember how excited everybody was about seeing Rashford come back after his shoulder surgery, thinking, wow, we're actually going to see... If, imagine that's how good Rashford was. Um, that's how good Rashford was when he was like... He had a, a shoulder injury and an ankle ligament injury. How good can he be when he's fully fit? And we just haven't seen that this season so far. But I, I don't think he's going anywhere. And you know what makes me laugh is yesterday seeing... See, <laughs> See, Mason Greenwood linked with Arsenal. Oh, you're cute, Arsenal, aren't you? You know Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, get, mate, get out of town. You're going absolutely nowhere near Mason Greenwood and even going nowhere near your stinking club either. Mason Greenwood, absolute star boy, and he's our star boy. Now, moving down here, there's a real question to be asked about Edinson Cavani being linked heavily with a move to Barcelona. Remember, Cavani had to be convinced to stay at Manchester United this year by Solskjaer. Um, he, want, he wanted to go back. I think he wanted to go back to South America, didn't he? I think he wanted to go back to Uruguay. Uh, but he stayed on. And he's been missing a lot because of injuries this season. Being linked with a move to Barcelona. And as much as it hurts me to say this, I, th I, I can see Manchester United selling Edinson Cavani in January. We can get a little bit of money for him. He's hardly played at all. I personally wouldn't. In fact, I'm going to put my opinion down here. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go back on that. Rather than what I think United will do, what I would rather do, I'd rather sit... Oh, dear. No, we don't want to red on that. Let's go back there. It's not working out. Sorry, Edinson. There we go. I would rather see United keep Edison Cavani between now and the end of the season. I wouldn't really see a benefit. We, we might make a, a little bit. We might save a little bit of money on his wages. But I'd rather have Edison Cavani in and around our squad between now and the end of the season. And then, obviously, he's going to be leaving in the summer. And then we need to replace him. And that's a whole different ballgame. And if Martial leaves as well, yeah, another whole ballgame. But look, Jaden Sancho, you're going absolutely nowhere, mate. Isn't it great to see Jaden Sancho starting to find that sort of form that he had at Dortmund? Really, knew, we all knew it was going to happen and I was excited to see it. And it's a shame that this sort of break has come because it's sort of got in the way of his form, but cracking. I'm really, really excited to watch him between now and the end of the season for sure. Anthony Langer, I mean, you could push for him to get loaned out, but I think he's going to get plenty of game time between now and the end of the season, in my opinion. Tahith Chong, if we can and he's fit enough, he should go back out on loan. I believe it was to Birmingham that he was going to. And Shoda Shoratire, do I think he... Nah, I think he's probably just a little bit too young, maybe, for that for that loan spell. I'd rather keep him and allow him to learn from the likes of Sancho, from Ronaldo, Martial, not Martial, sorry, Rashford and Greenwood. Right, let's run through this, eh? This, this is my full run through of Keep or Sell, the January 2022 edition with Raph Radnick. Maybe his only...
transfer window as Manchester United manager. I'm keeping De Gea. I want Lee Grant to be sold if he can. Uh, Tom Heaton to stay and Dean Henderson to go out on loan. Obviously, that leaves us with two goalkeepers, so that won't happen. So if Dean, it's probably Dean Henderson going out on loan is, is probably the best option, I would say, for Manchester United under his development, for sure. Defenders, if, if we can somehow sell Phil Jones, that's what I'd like to see. And the rest is not really much. Que- there's no real questions to be had. Brandon Williams is already out on loan. Uh, Axel Twenzebe is already out on loan. And Ted Menge, if we can get him another loan, why not? I think that will be a good thing. There's, a, there's big questions in midfield, though. This is where it really lies. And I think Manchester United, if we can, we should be selling Paul Pogba in the January transfer window. I think we should be keeping Juan Mata, probably selling him in the summer. Jesse Lingard, if we can get 20 mil, 20 mil plus, we should be selling Lingard, man. We should have sold him in the summer. We priced him out of a move, set him now in January, try and reinvest that money. Andreas Pereira, make that move to Flamengo permanent. Ahmad, I think he should go out on loan to final. Remember, he was going there in the summer, but an injury stopped that. Fred and Bruno, keeping both of them, of course. And Palistri's out on loan already. Matic, I think he should be kept until the summer and then we get rid of him and we replace him. Donny van der Beek, real question marks about Donny, isn't there? Real, real question marks. If it's for his own career, we need, we need to let him leave. If it's for Manchester United's squad strength, we need to keep him. It depends which is the more, more important thing and whether, we, whether or not you've got empathy with van der Beek's situation. I think I do have empathy with the situation. That's why I'm, a, kind of, I'm in an iron about it, really. Uh, James Garner, he's out on loan at Forest. He should stay there. And Scott McTominay, of course, going nowhere. And Hannibal, I'd like to see him kept at the club because I think Hannibal can properly break through into the first team between now and the end of the season. That's how good he's been doing out with Tunisia. And what, I want to watch that final this weekend if I can. Now, with the terms of the attackers, Ronaldo, of course, we keep him. Martial, I want him to be sold. I think United can get 20, 30 million for him. If we can get 50 million combined for Martial and Lingard in January, that's brilliant business. I think we should be able to. That's, that is their true values. Rashford, Greenwood, Sancho, Ilanga, all staying, and Shaw Atire too. I think Cavani, we should be keeping him in January if we can. It's, again, whether or not he pushes for the move, he might get the move. But you're not, we're not really going to gain much from that. We're just going to get Cavani not as an option between now and the end of the season. I just don't, I think that weakens the squad. And to Heath Chong, if he can go back out on loan between now and the summer. No, yeah, exactly. Half, second half of the season. Woo! That's the full run through of the squad. What do you reckon? So if, if we go through this, that means that we're going to be setting in January, or could be setting, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, well, we're not going to sell five players, are we? In an ideal situation, Martial leaves, Paul Pogba leaves, and Jesse Lingard leaves. Those three are the most important ones for me. I don't think Phil Jones, anybody will buy him. But what do you think? That was a full run through of our whole squad for Ralph Ragnick's first and potentially only January transfer win. Not January transfer window, only transfer windows Manchester United manager. These are the players I think we should keep and these are the players I think we should sell or loan. I've explained all my reasonings. Now, you let me know what you think in the comments below as you always do. And please, if you're still here, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to United People's TV. But make sure you get in the comments on this one because I'll be really interested to know where you stand on all of these players ahead of January. Take it easy.